Hey expats and travelers alike, today we're here to talk about expat life in Riga. We've broken it down into three parts, moving, living, and working. I'm Josh with Expats Everywhere. And I'm Kaylee. And this is our review preview show. This one started off as a close race, but Riga ended up pulling away with the last few days becoming our winner. Let's start with moving to Riga. Riga is the capital of Latvia and makes up more than 50% of the country's GDP. Its population is over 600,000 and there are only about 5% of foreigners there. Even though there aren't many foreigners now, it is becoming more and more popular as a place to move as the city grows and becomes better known. While it's not the biggest capital city in the world, it does have some great things to offer. Latvia was previously occupied by Russia slash the Soviet Union, but gained its independence in 1991. Since then, it has opened up tremendously and joined the EU in 2004. They started using the Euro in 2014. Riga has beautiful 19th century architecture mixed with modern buildings. It's the cultural and economic center of Latvia. Even though Latvian is the official language, many people speak English, especially with the younger generations. However, it will be helpful to learn a little bit of Latvian and the locals will appreciate it. Keep in mind that you will have a more difficult time with just English outside of the capital and also in the workplace. Let's talk about the weather in the Baltic City. Now, I'm not much for the cold weather, so the winter is not for me. It can get down to negative 4 degrees Fahrenheit with lots of snow and icy cold winters. That's not my scene, but the summer sound nice. It's a little humid and the average temperature is around 65 degrees Fahrenheit, so that's really pleasant. It can get up to the mid 80s, so that's a little better. So for those of you who enjoy icy and snowy winters with mild summers, Riga is the place for you. It's not for everyone though, so as you prepare to move, make sure you pack your coats and take a vacation to the beach before you go. Well, how about accommodations? The housing market is extremely reasonable. You'll definitely pay to be in the center district, but there are options outside of the center that are great as well. We'll touch on rent and prices and then the cost of living in a little bit. Because Riga is so small, there aren't many so-called expat areas. So the best thing that you can do is you can check out accommodations near to where you work or just a specific location that fits your lifestyle and go from there. A final note before you move there is the healthcare. While healthcare is free, we have to note that many expats choose to go the private healthcare route, even though Riga has seen big improvements, really. Private seems to be the way to go for expats. Let's move on to living in Riga. Riga offers a high quality of life with low cost of living, fairly low taxes, and beautiful architecture. The historic center is a UNESCO World Heritage Site, and you really can have a good mix of old and new in the city. Riga is definitely a more affordable option when it comes to the cost of living compared to other European hubs. A one-bedroom apartment in the center will cost you around 400 euros, while outside the center will be around 300 euros. A three-bedroom apartment in the center is around 800 euros, and outside of the center is around 550 euros. Utilities can kind of be pricey around 180 euros. A meal at an inexpensive restaurant will cost you around 8 euros, and a three-course meal for two at a mid-scale restaurant will be around 40 euros. Coffee and beer are around 2 to 3 euros each. Riga has amazing Latvian art and culture. We've talked about how the city is a great mix of the old, the medieval architecture, and the new, like skyscrapers. But the landscape is also something to note as well. As for crime goes, just be aware of your surroundings and keep your eye on your things. It's best to stay in well-lit places at night. The airport is close to the city center, which is great for commuting and traveling. Buses are common. Riga doesn't actually have an underground metro system, but there is a tram, and the center is super walkable, and cars aren't allowed in the old town. Biking is also an option, but it's tough to walk and bike in those winter months when it's cold and there's lots of snow. Taking buses and using the tram are two good transportation options, and they're very reasonable. A single ride will cost you one euro 15 cents, but there are many options for multiple rides. For example, 10 rides is 10.90, and you can also get a ticket for a certain amount of time, like an hour, which is 2.30, or five days, which is 15. You can also get a monthly pass, so lots of options for their buses and trams. Before we talk about working in Riga, we want to take a minute to give a few shout outs to those who have been commenting on our previous review preview shows. Nora B says that she's French and used to live in Toronto. I just want to say that it needs to be highlighted that if you don't speak French in Quebec, especially Quebec City, it could be very challenging to find jobs. Love your videos. I'm one of your first subscribers. I'm amazed how clear and informative your content is. I feel now that I know you keep doing these videos. Nora. Nora, thanks for the positive contributions in our channel and comment section. 
She's not the only one that said this, but let's highlight it. You need to speak French if you're in Quebec. Dennis Sancho wrote, Quebec City winters are brutal. They start basically in November and go to April. It's minus 10 to minus 20 most of the winter. People only speak French. Language laws don't permit working in English. There you go again, French in Quebec City. And brutal winters, ugh, for me, I'm out. Hi Ganachin Singh, namaste. Oh, you definitely make us proud. I have found your content to always be well researched and put together. And I mainly have seen you evolve in your audio video qualities. It's a pleasure to the eyes and ears now. Keep rocking. Cheers. Thanks for the feedback. We really appreciate you. Every bit of money that we make from the YouTube ads and such, we pour right back in to buy better equipment so that we can make our production better and better and do more. We're even learning more about video editing so that we can make things better. So thank you guys for supporting us. We ask that you continue to support us. We appreciate it. All right, lastly, let's talk about working in Riga. Since Riga is the capital, it offers a wide variety of jobs across many different industries. The country relies on the city economically, which is great for expat careers. You can find anything from jobs to business, tourism, even shipping since Riga is an international hub and it's right near the Baltic Sea. Any type of job in the tourist industry is up for grabs as tourism is growing. So you have things like restaurants and cafes as well. There are jobs near the port that have to do with shipping and trade and manufacturing. The importing and exporting sector are also important for the city. Keep in mind that salaries might not be as high as they are in other large European cities, but cost of living is also low, so it balances out. We do have to know that it can be tough finding a job with just English alone. Most international companies and businesses are finding their home in Riga, but it's still a bit of a slow process, so the language can be a barrier. However, there are options for teaching English. This can be in the form of teaching at a school, teaching at a business, or uh, maybe even an au pair and living with a family, that type of teaching. You will need a work permit with all of these options. If you're moving with your company or you're able to secure a job before you move there, talk to your employer about this process. You can enter the country for 90 days and try to find work that way, but if you aren't a part of the EU, then you'll need to file a residency or work permit to stay longer. The visa application varies depending on what country you're coming from, Going through different job portals online is your best option for finding a job, or if you're in the country, word of mouth. If you haven't already, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to stay up to date on what's happening in the world of expats everywhere. On that note, let's quickly let you know what is happening in our world. First of all, we just wanted to say thanks to our subscribers for how awesome you guys are because we're getting so close to 10,000 subscribers and we're super excited to be so close. Josh and I are working on our visas for our move to Portugal, so we've been vlogging that journey for you, and we've gotten a lot of questions. So this week, we put out a Q&A video answering some of those frequent questions that we're getting. Make sure you check out our vlogs about moving to Portugal and that video for more information. As far as interviews go, we have interviewed Bonventure, who is a Kenyan, but is living in Doha, and then also Cornelia, who is from Germany, but living in Panama City. So catch those expat interviews on our channel. Moving forward, we will continue to share our personal journey as we try to get to Portugal and also other expat experiences through their interviews. We are now moving on to the letter S. So if you are a subscriber, be sure to head over to the community tab page to vote for the next city. If you're not a subscriber, now is the time to subscribe so that you can make your vote count. Remember, we post these videos every other Thursday. That's all for this review preview show. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.